And then there's the election interference. And this is the one that came with an Easter egg in the middle of it that I still can't quite believe they just confirmed. So last month, the busy, busy, busy DNI's office, Director of National Intelligence Office under Avril Haines, they declassified this intelligence community assessment about the 2020 election, about what foreign entities did to mess with our election in 2020. And when it comes to what Russia did in 2020, there was very blunt language. It was spelled out in very strong terms. Quote, we assess that President Putin and the Russian state authorized and conducted influence operations against the 2020 U.S. presidential election aimed at denigrating President Biden and the Democratic Party, supporting former President Trump, undermining public confidence in the electoral process, and exacerbating socio-political divisions in the United States. A key element of Moscow's strategy this election cycle was its use of people linked to Russian intelligence to launder influence narratives, including misleading or unsubstantiated allegations against President Biden through U.S. media organizations, U.S. officials, and prominent U.S. individuals, some of whom were close to former President Trump and his administration. The report continues, quote, a network of Ukraine-linked individuals, including Russian influence agent Konstantin Kalimnik, individuals who were also connected to the Russian Federal Security Service, the FSB, took steps throughout the election cycle to damage U.S. ties to Ukraine, to denigrate President Biden and his candidacy, and to benefit former President Trump's prospects for re-election. We assess this network, again, it's Ukraine-linked individuals who are also connected to the FSB. We assess this network also sought to discredit the Obama administration by emphasizing accusations of corruption by U.S. officials and to falsely blame Ukraine for interfering in the 2016 U.S. presidential election. So this is the intelligence community's declassified assessment of foreign attacks on our election in 2020. This was declassified last month. And all this detail on what Russia did to try to boost Donald Trump's candidacy in 2020, just as they had boosted him in 2016. And It was very interesting at the time. And now, in retrospect, maybe we have greater insight into why this happened. But it was very interesting that by name in this declassified report, we got a description of what this one specific guy, Konstantin Kalimnik, did for the Kremlin in 2020. And the reason his name was familiar to us when we all got this report declassified last month is because this is a guy who had a very starring role in what the Kremlin did to try to elect Trump in 2016. This is a guy who had like a starring role in the Mueller report. This is the guy who, if you control F his name, Kalimnik in the Senate intelligence report about what happened to our election in 2016, his name comes up 754 times. Kalimnik is a major figure in our understanding of what Russia did to attack our election in 2016 to try to put Donald Trump in the White House. And here he is again, four years later, in the 2020 election, with U.S. intelligence saying he again played a starring role, a leading role, an important role in the Kremlin's efforts to to mess with yet another U.S. election to try to make sure Donald Trump would stay president. And today, the Biden administration announced a whole new raft of sanctions on dozens of individuals and entities in response to Russia's 2020 election interference. But in explaining the new sanctions today against one Russian intelligence official in particular, in explaining the new sanctions today against this guy, Konstantin Kalimnik, reminding the world that there's a quarter million dollar reward out there leading for information, uh, for information leading to his arrest, reminding the world that he's under indictment already in the United States. Today, unexpectedly, amid this big blast of sanctions and consequences for what Russia has been doing against us, we got some big news. Here's what the formal announcement from the Treasury Department said. It says, quote, Konstantin Kalimnik is a known Russian intelligence services agent implementing influence operations on the Russian government's behalf. During the 2016 U.S. presidential election campaign, Kalimnik provided the Russian intelligence services with sensitive information on polling and campaign strategy. Additionally, Kalimnik sought to promote the narrative that Ukraine, not Russia, had interfered in the 2016 U.S. presidential election. So that's new today. That's from the Treasury 
today. And as I said, there's sanctions on a ton of people and a ton of entities, and they name the malign websites, and they put these new financial restrictions on how people can invest in government funds in Russia. And I mean, there's a lot of stuff that they announced here today, right? Including, we're not going to do anything about the Russian bounties because we're not satisfied for sure that that definitely happened. Fascinating. Tons of detail, lots of interesting information today from the intelligence community. But this thing on Kalimnik? I mean, if you start at the end there of what they said, they say that he uh, sought to promote the narrative that Ukraine, not Russia, had interfered in the 2016 U.S. presidential election. So you start at that part of it, fine. They say that Kalimnik was part of the Kremlin's efforts to cover up what Russia did when they messed with our elections to try to elect Trump in 2016. Russia tried to cover it up by concocting this story that blamed another country, that blamed Ukraine for doing that, not Russia. They're saying Kremlin, uh, Kalimnik was part of that on behalf of the Kremlin. Got it. Right. It should be noted that almost the whole Republican Party under Donald Trump and most of the conservative media world in this country went for that hook, line and sinker, even though it was Russian disinformation designed to get them off the hook by disguising their own role and blaming it on somebody else. Right. Everybody who went along with that, it was really Ukraine. You were playing the Kremlin's disinformation game. Congratulations. But OK, so they're saying Kalimnik was a big mouthpiece for that. He was part of the Kremlin's efforts to cover their tracks for what they did in 2016 and blame Ukraine instead. Got it. But the other assertion that they make there, which is a brand new assertion we've never had from the U.S. government before about what happened in 2016, they did not need to include that today. But they did. And in so doing, they made big news. I mean, what they just disclosed here about what happened in 2016 was... I think you'd call it the collusion. The Trump campaign chairman in 2016 was Paul Manafort. He was recently pardoned by President Trump after Trump lost re-election. Manafort was described in the Mueller report as having sent private, non-public, sensitive campaign polling data, internal campaign polling data from the Trump campaign to this guy, Konstantin Kalimnik, during the summer of 2016, while Russian intelligence was working hand over fist to try to influence the election to help Trump. Why did Paul Manafort give Kalimnik that secret Trump polling data in the summer of 2016? We don't know. At least we didn't know. The Mueller team didn't explain. They described Kalimnik as associated with Russian intelligence. But they never said why Manafort was giving internal Trump campaign data to this guy associated with Russian intelligence. That's how Mueller left it. Then the Senate Intelligence Committee looked at it, too, and they, too, couldn't really explain. They did go further in describing Konstantin Kalimnik bluntly as a Russian intelligence officer. Mueller had said he was someone associated with Russian intelligence. Senate Intelligence Committee is like, no, he's a Russian intelligence officer. Let's just cut to the chase. But as to why Trump's campaign chair was giving a Russian intelligence officer sensitive internal campaign polling data during the campaign, Senate Intelligence Committee said they couldn't tell. Quote, on numerous occasions, Manafort sought to secretly share internal campaign information with Kalimnik. The committee was unable to reliably determine why Manafort shared sensitive internal polling data or campaign strategy with Kalimnik or with whom Kalimnik further shared that information. The committee had limited insight into Kalimnik's communications with Manafort and into Kalimnik's communications with other individuals connected to Russian influence operations, all of whom used communications security practices. In other words, these guys all used encrypted channels to communicate, so we don't have any visibility into it. We don't know what Kalimnik, this Russian intelligence agent, did once the Trump campaign gave him their secret internal campaign data. We don't know who he passed it on to, if anyone, because we don't have any visibility into his communications and his movements. He used encrypted channels. That's what the Senate Intelligence Committee said last year. But now apparently we know. And I don't know why the Biden administration chose to disclose this today. This was not really the subject of their announcements otherwise today. But the Biden administration, through this Treasury sanctions list today, announced bluntly that, yeah, Konstantin Kalimnik is under indictment for obstruction of justice already in this country. Yeah, there's a $250,000 reward for him. Yeah, he's newly sanctioned now for his role in the Kremlin's 2020 election interference to help Trump. But by the way, we also figured out what was going on there between him and the Trump campaign back in 2016. Quote, during the 2016 presidential election campaign, Kalimnik provided the Russian intelligence services with sensitive information on polling and campaign strategy. 
We had known before that the Trump campaign gave it to him. We had never before known what he did with it. But now we know. The Trump campaign chairman gave a Russian intelligence officer the Trump campaign's internal strategy and polling data. That Russian intelligence officer then gave it to his bosses in the Russian intelligence agencies. And that presumably must have been very helpful to the Russian intelligence agencies in their concerted contemporaneous efforts to target their attacks on our election to the maximum benefit of candidate Donald Trump. Russian intelligence attacked us in 2016 to help the Trump campaign win that election. We now know the Trump campaign secretly gave their own data to Russian intelligence in the middle of that attack, which again, presumably helped what the Russians were doing. As the New York Times puts it in their new story on this that just posted tonight, quote, the revelation made public in a Treasury Department document announcing new sanctions against Russia established for the first time that there was a direct pipeline from the Trump campaign to Russian spies at a time when the Kremlin was engaged in a covert effort to sabotage the 2016 presidential election. Having the polling data would have allowed Russia to better understand the Trump campaign strategy, including where the campaign was focusing resources at a time when the Russian government was carrying out its own efforts to undermine Trump's opponents. What's the definition of collusion again? Not just passively benefiting from somebody else's crime, but actively helping them commit it? Is that what we call collusion? Tell me more about how the whole Russia thing is a hoax. Biden, I was just going to say it's been a long year. It's been a long six years. <laughs> hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. You should know that you can follow today's top stories and breaking news and catch up on your favorite MSNBC shows all in one place. Download the NBC News app today.